those tapes are rolling. Thirty seconds. Twenty. Ten seconds. So it's really good to see you, as always. That was a great thing Mark sent over, Mark Stallman about McClure. And Tom Wolfe is so funny, he's but he's a, also perceptive. You know? He tells the truth. He's a satirist. He, he, oh, he is. He can only tell the I'll truth. I'll never forget that book, The Painted Word. I thought that was so funny. It's not the paintings, it's the critics. That it's make the theory. The painting. Yeah, it's the theory. And the artists hated that. Yeah. Welcome, welcome very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program a dear old friend of Conversations, I would say the world, that being Bob Dobbs. And Bob Dobbs is being uh, billed as a, uh, a, a paramedia ecologist, which is, uh, bespeaks the fact that he's very interested in Marshall McLuhan and in other comprehensive thinkers about the effects of media upon consciousness and so forth. He's got a wide, eclectic uh, take on things, and he's always interesting and great to talk with Bob Dobbs. And Bob, welcome really very much to the conversation. It's really a pleasure to see you again. Happy to be back again. Ha back again. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> Round five. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, share a little bit of your background, if you can, and then we'll get into because we were just talking. Mark Stallman, a mutual friend of ours, sent us a thing that Tom Wolfe had in New York Times yesterday. But let's talk, a, maybe that's a kickoff point, but maybe share a little of your own background, because you were uh, associated with McClure and that kind of stuff. And well, uh, I was born in 1922 in Paris, uh -huh. and I was part of a very obscure intelligence agency around the world, and they were suspicious of Marshall McLuhan in the early 50s when uh -huh. he started publishing essays exposing how the newer intelligence agencies were managing the global economy. The newer ones, the new other than the old land of Fundia or the... The newer results, uh -huh. the newer effects after World War II, because yeah. before World War II you had a battle between the Jesuits, the Freemasons, the Nazis, the Bolsheviks, and uh, the Jewish thing that the was leading to the Mossad, thing? Yeah, yeah, the Zionist thing. So those uh -huh. five factions um, fought out in World War II. Wait a minute, in terms of the intelligence yeah, services and, the intelligence and, and so forth, OSS representing, and representing nest eggs, uh, you have the Jesuits, which is the Vatican. Yeah, They've Catholic. had wealth for 500 years. Yes, indeed. Then with the printing press, the Freemasons came in out of England. That was the Protestant Church. So uh -huh. that was a new group. Each new technology brings in a new intelligence agency. A new intelligence yes. agency. That is, okay. A that's, new that's grouping, a new yeah. power nest. Right. And so in Who the, can understand the environment, uh, the invisible environment often They take than advantage. Yeah, right. So what happens in the 19th century with the telegraph and the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, uh -huh. you have an intelligence agency that becomes the Bolsheviks, and they get their nest egg in Russia, okay. in the Soviet Union. Well, there was also an ideology behind it. Oh, yeah, Is there yeah. an ideology behind it? They're the, the ones who are the bureaucrats the of the ideology. Yeah. So then what's the next technology is radio. So what jumps on the radio medium becomes a new threat and forms a new nest egg of power Fashion. is the, the Nazis. Yeah, right. All right. And then after World War II, the Middle East is very important, <coughs> and the Mossad becomes very important as a representative of the Freemasons, the Vatican, and the Nazis, not so much, and the Bolsheviks. It's well, those are ideological things, and you had people that you, you have people representing established fortunes that come out of history in a yes. certain sense. I guess that there must have been fortunes that came out of the Roman Empire, and then you had Latifundia or that. That's and, the Vatican. Know, the va that the Vatican, yeah, you the would see that as the Catholic Church. You associate that with the Church, but there are people that were secularly oriented and had a long established uh, maybe agricultural That's based represented by the Queen of England. That's uh -huh. the British uh, Royal Society and what came from Bacon and the uh -huh. power that the Protestant Church established uh -huh. in, in England. But power has resided much uh, throughout history, ultimately, in who had, well, you have military power, but then you have economic power. And information. 
And, Which in, is usually, and information yeah, serves both. Huh? Yeah, and yeah. information is usually the new media. Uh -huh. That's what I meant by the newer intelligence agencies. The new uh -huh. effects after World War II, uh -huh. when actually you had a global village and a one world situation, uh -huh. the front for that was the United Nations. Uh -huh. uh, but the satellite created a new problem. Uh -huh. and, uh, and the computer? No. And the computer, but yeah. the satellite comes first. Uh -huh. Then TV Tell and the star. Uh, yes, yeah. and the Sputnik in 57. Sput Remember Sputnik in 57? Yeah. Everybody went into a cocked hat because the Soviets were ahead with their... So yeah. McLuhan saw yeah. the effect of the of television, computer, and the satellite, and he started to expose actually real deep intelligence information that what I call, and who I work with, was the solar government, a new oh. intelligence agency that was around the whole previous five factions, but was on top of what was called later Echelon. Mm -hmm. Out of England in 1960, they built up satellite hookups that they could monitor the global traffic of Wait information. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, now we had a thing called the Illuminati. We had the Bilderberger. These are people that we had. Those were, or those are institutions. Those are the, the, that free, are the Jesuits uh -huh. and the Freemasons. Right. Way back. That's uh -huh. old money. That's Real old money. Real old money. Yeah. Right. And Printing you were, press. You, you and your family were involved with those people yes. that represent those interests yes. that go yeah. way, way back in yeah. Europe largely. And, right? we, and they largely yeah. were put on the side lines uh -huh. uh, after World War II. That's why uh, the Bilderbergers around Prince Bernhard and then the later the Trial of the Commission had no problem uh, getting together because they were on the sidelines. Uh -huh. They represent the wealth of the printing press, uh -huh. but not the wealth post-Keynesian society where wealth was information uh -huh. and keeping people involved in consuming information and uh -huh. then products became information uh -huh. and that therefore there was no real power in a bureaucratic sense anymore. The people were in power because right. th that's the consumerism. Since when would that be uh, the be case? That would be 1960. 60, yeah. maybe the 70. Remember in the 50s, uh -huh. you had a little, yeah, it was a rough time in the late 40s, mm -hmm. then you had a little bo boomlet in the early 50s, and there was a bit of a recession by 56, 57, yeah. and then there was the fear of Sputnik, and mm -hmm. then everything went into a military order here in the United States, and crash mm -hmm. programming of kids and education, and yeah. emphasis on science. But the consumerism doesn't burst out until the Kennedy administration. I see, yeah. And that's the wealth caused by the satellite. The satellite creates a rim spin for all the previous environments. Rim spin? Yeah, you What's know, that mean? You know, you're turning a wheel, and yeah. then there's always a spin Odd on the edge. Yeah, side uh -huh. effect spins right, spiraling right, out. That's right. rim spin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so the rim spin of the, of the wealth of the 60s was what people call the affluent 60s. Uh-huh. But then that flipped in to information itself yeah. by a media, by yeah. television and, and early computers, that was wealth. Uh -huh. That just keeping the talk going. Uh -huh. McLuhan called it the word makes the market. Yeah. And that at that point the White House became the figure. The president became so the, the most the ground was what? Figure and ground of what? Yeah, yeah. it was the figure uh -huh. for the ground of all media merging. Uh -huh into pure information as the ground. And Mr. McLuhan was writing that. He was writing about uh, that. that. He wrote in, in, a, in he a very wrote pressing in, way. Yeah. yeah, he was writing. He did a book in take uh, in 72 called Take Today, the Executive's Dropout. Right. And he then in 74 did this great op-ed in uh -huh. the New York Times called Immediate Post to Inflation. And he explained the role of Henry Kissinger, he explained the gambling casino economy, mm -hmm. and he explained how the word makes the market. Mm -hmm. And the word makes the market is that everything is geared. This leads to herd, herd Pack journalism. Uh -huh. Why are they always looking at what the president is going to say? What's the White House going to say? Mm. Because that's the last, what I call anthropomorphic image, the last human reference point in a world that's gone virtual and the machines have basically become alive. You're going very quickly here now. A world has gone virtual and uh, you have a term, the android meme. And you yeah. have the meme from Dawkins, which is like a cultural. Yes. Uh, and what I mean by the android meme is that. Yeah the modern electronic digital technology acquires the characteristics of speech, uh -huh. interactive, right. not one-way mass, mass broadcasting. Right. Once you had the interactive media, right. then as far as humans were concerned, they're like humans. They can talk back to us. Uh -huh. And that living factor of the digital reality, which we call virtual reality, uh -huh. I call Android meme because no icons, no mimetic points, like Tom Wolfe says in his, his op-ed last, yeah, last right. night. Uh -huh. In the New York Times, he talks about that people don't come for the actual particular paintings in the museums or to buy clothes mm -hmm. or, uh, or to watch the Yankees. They go there for the fashion shows, capital yeah. F fashion. Yeah. To be the, where the action is. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's, no, that's the people who live here. We're oh. talking about the tourists. Oh, I see. Right. The tourists oh. come here oh. to experience the hologram of capital F fashion. Uh -huh. Or they go to the museums to experience culture, capital yeah. C. Yeah. And they go to see the Yankees, not 
the, the, whether the Yankees win or not is not a matter. It's to experience the myth and meme of baseball uh, and, and the, what, all that stuff they see on TV. Yeah. Uh, but those that live here, yeah. the bureaucrats of these massive media environments, uh -huh. the honchos, the ones who seem to have the power, uh -huh. they have to stay here to make one-on-one -on -one contact. Yeah, right. And the, and the over one, lunch. Yeah, over <laughs> lunch, yes. And it <laughs> saved New York City. so funny, yeah. It, it saved New York City's economy. And Go what do they call it? Gothamville? No, what do Gotham they call Land. it? Gothamland. Gothamland. This Gotham is like a theme park. Yes. This is like a theme park, like a Disney theme park. That's thing, yeah. for the yeah. subatomic peasants. Uh-huh. For the people who come here as tourism. Uh-huh. But outside that, because as the media gets smaller and smaller, uh, the underground... And it is, yeah. yeah small and more friendly and more more alive and more interactive yeah. that meant it's that alive yeah. it's alive <laughs> like and Frank and it's is talking, talking to me yes <laughs> and and you got Kurzweil coming out with his book this autumn saying the singularity is near the machines are going to get smarter than people well I think that's right. already happened yeah. like you he, think it has happened yeah that, that well happened. he's looking about 12 years out or so huh? yeah no he's uh, a bit behind me you um, think so yeah yeah well he's pretty interesting but anyway go yeah, ahead the, yeah. he's yeah. a he's a he's a gadget lover so he gets bogged down in what's called the efficient causality uh -huh. and how things work and how uh -huh. you would tinker and make them better I mean that's how he got famous he, he, he wrote that book if I may he wrote that book called he's written two he wrote the one more the age of he spiritual did, well he, no he wrote the age of spiritual machine 1999 yeah. he wrote the age of intelligent machines in 1989 10 years previous and right. he predicted within about three months when the computer would defeat the world's chess champion right, right. From ten years but out, see, that's prediction. It was the prediction. Those of are the particular exit. events. McLuhan, even though McLuhan yeah, predicted, that was pretty good from ten years. Yeah, that's but McLuhan predicted in the sixties. He predicted the internet and all that happened. Okay. Now uh, the point is, it's not that yeah. yeah, it's not that McLuhan predicted mm -hmm. what little gadget would show up uh -huh. that would change the economy. Yeah. He predicted the effects on people's psychology and yeah. sociology and culture. How human nature of, would change. He had read a lot of Joyce. Yes, well, Joyce Rejoice. was the key. Rejoice. <laughs> yeah. Rejoice was the, was the key. Finnings, yeah. Finnings Wake is the Internet, uh -huh. right there in the 30s. Uh -huh. Started in the 20s. It's, uh -huh. it, it was called Work in Progress before it was finally published in 39. Uh -huh. But that is a book of nothing but classic Finnings Wake email. was called Work in Progress for yeah. all that time? For 17 on? years. No he, kidding, he kept really? the title secret. He just kept it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. How and, I didn't the, know that. The interesting thing is, is that um, he has a word in there, uh -huh. capital E, Emailia, uh -huh. E M I L. Okay, e M A I L I A. Uh, Emailia. Yeah, Emailia. And really, the whole book was is a Was that a character or a word? No, it was a place. It was a place. It's Emailia. He, he knew how to use language uh -huh. to predict the future. It was uh -huh. more than he realized. Yeah. But his book is actually a collage of uh -huh. viewpoints like you get on a chat line. Of technological effects. Effects and then the, and the thunders. And then technology coming alive and becoming yeah. a living conversation. Right, right. So McLuhan used that to get ahead of everybody. Now, the intelligence agencies understood this, the ones I was part Back of. Back to the beginning yeah. where we they started. Understood the meeting was the message. It didn't matter what the ideology was, which, which meme or which, um, whether communism or capitalism won as an ideology. That was all part of a propaganda spin thing That's to keep the, the techno-electro-subatomic peasants involved in writing magazine the articles. The subatomic peasants. You <laughs> told these terms techno, out, yeah, like particle not? physics. Make people think here, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Subatomic techno-peasants, which was the whole population living in the satellite global theater. Right. All right? Participating. The super audience worked for itself. Uh -huh. No longer worked for anybody else. Uh -huh. And now it's called reality TV and uh, American Idol. This is where we've come to the end of the information society, and the present-day audience is panicking because there's no medium for it to work for it with itself anymore. Uh -huh. And so what you have is that the audience gets in the act of reality TV, survivor shows, game shows, where they replay the memes of the entertainment world, mm -hmm. and then if someone wins, they're kicked off and they have to go s make their own recording contracts and have concerts and write books. No one attends those uh -huh. because it's irrelevant. It's the audience watching itself. Uh -huh. So you can look from, the, from Elvis to the Beatles to punk rock to uh, digital music. The main meme was that highbrow culture, which Tom Wolfe, learning from McLuhan, satirized mm -hmm. in The Painted Word, yeah. was taken over by amateur mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. the, the expressionist Pop arts. culture? Is Pop culture yeah. is the audience saying, I can do that. Yeah, right. You can read any history. When the Beatles saw Elvis, the, to be the Beatles, yeah. you know, John Lennon, yeah. they said, man, look at that guy. I love his music, and I think we could do that. Yeah. Then when the punk rockers saw the Ramones. Chuck Berry. No, no, oh, yeah, oh. no, then they saw the Ramones oh, yeah. or uh, the Sex Pistols, any mm -hmm. of those bands. Yeah. They said, geez, those guys can't play, mm -hmm. but they're big stars, yeah. and so we can do that. Yeah. It's more and more refinements of the audience gets in the act. More and more participation on the yeah. part of the masses? 
That's in right. terms of the overall yeah. thing. And that may be a large theme of what's going on if we're talking about something other than just a That's, historical This pattern. isn't an economic effect, what uh -huh. I'm going to lead up to. What uh -huh. I didn't finish the point is that yeah, the Kurzweil deals with yeah. the gadgets, and that's called well, efficient, efficient causality. But the effects on the users, on the societies, is called formal causality. These uh -huh. are four causes that Aristotle laid out. Uh -huh. Teleologic, or um, final causality, uh, material causality, efficient causality, and formal causality. Formal mm. causality was dropped mm. 300 years ago oh, because we were into technological progress and science. Well, hadn't we been in te technological progress since we first picked up the stone tool 200,000 years We'd ago? We've been in it, but it was invisible. Yeah. It didn't become an ideology until the 18th century. 18th century, it yeah. came, and what form of ideology did it take in the 18th century? What are we talking about? Science. We're, we're talking, science we're talking about the industrial revol the revolution in, fr in France right. in 1789. All the polytechnical institutes came out of that era. Well, yeah, know? the the, the uh, yeah, mass the steam education. engine was invented in 1776, right. and the, the industrial idea of revolution mass was precursor. Yeah. yeah, it's a mass education of the citizen of the of the peasants. These these boys could go to school and learn whatever the latest technology was. That was a novelty. That was yeah. a new. That was communism. Yeah. That was allowing everybody to share in the industrial technology. And who was it that said? I, I, I have Winston Churchill being quoted this way recently from an, uh, a friend of mine who's an architect, but we shape our tools thereafter our tools shape us, or ape us, as I think McLuhan said. McLuhan changed it to Put ape that, us. He did, he did a play yeah. on words, a pun or something. Right. But who, would, who came up with that idea that we create, envi we create environments and then those environments and those technologies have affected McLuhan finally came around to saying the medium is the message. It was the Samuel Butler. Was Samuel really? Butler, really? Really? who wrote okay. Erewhon. Uh -huh. And he was the one who uh, started to write and see that, that technology was part of evolution. Uh -huh. And it he is? came up with the answer, well, which came first, the chicken or the egg. Uh -huh. He said the chicken was the egg's way of getting more egg. Yeah. You uh -huh. know, so he collapsed it. And then uh, Emerson, well, now, yeah, but Ralph of Waldo, oh, Emerson, yeah. one yeah. of those guys said that... Um, Emerson or Thoreau, I think it's Emerson in about 1870, he said that the body is the magazine of all inventions. Uh -huh. So he understood that t technology is an extension of the body. Extension of the body, an extension, <coughs> you, could see it in, you could see it like a computer's extension of the central nervous system. We're extending our consciousness right. into the environment. As a matter of fact. And we have a unique, cap don't we have a unique capability that way compared to the other creatures? Here's something, yeah. yes, here's yeah, something okay. I was reading in the yeah. paper coming down here. Yeah. Uh, in Just the happened to see it in yes. the paper today. No, I yeah. thought about this. This yeah. is the old Satanist, Satanist Bible, yeah. written in the 60s. Uh -huh. And apparently one of the Satanist dogma or dictums or aphorisms, aphorisms is, quote, as environments change, no human ideal stands ashore. Uh -huh. Or certain. Mm -hmm. So as environments change, no human ideal stands ashore. The idea that technologies change people was a cliche by the 60s. All right? Well, it started on. in the 19th century. It's not that McLuhan came up with the idea that the media changed us. Mm -hmm. He came up to show how they changed us. No one had done that yet. People, I mean, James Joyce, uh, Schumpeter in economics, they began to see that technology had a new dimension to people's lives yeah. that no one really thought. In the 19th century, people thought they were adding uh, technologies to help humans, yeah. not change them uh -huh. or change mass movements or, or culture. Or that those technologies out there uh, reflect back on us. Yes, yes. That so you come we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape, shape us. us. So the existence of television reflects back on uh, on the evolution of consciousness. So then has a role. And none of the, the but other McLuhan added to it. He said that he realized that the tools ape us. Yeah. They mime our physiological structures, yeah. our sensory mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. He did a pun on. Then that only yeah. shaped us. That yeah. was normal to oh. understand that. But if you think of evolution, we got evolution. We can go back through a number of singularities. Six hundred million years ago, all fauna was contained in a sponge, mm -hmm. and there was evolution from. Three point seven billion years ago was the beginning of this whole big. Bang theory of thing we're living in. We have no number of singularities, but we're now getting to a point, and of all the evolutionary lines, and there's greater diversity, and there's understanding of punctuated equilibrium, we've got Darwin, we've got, you know, all these kind of things, but that of all the creatures and things that exist, it's the human line, or the hominoid line leading to Homo sapien, which has a para excellence or uh, ability to extend their consciousness in the form of technology and create, and create an nature. environment other than that which in the Eden-like sense is given. That's right. And that's you something unique into self-reflective consciousness. And we're now coming to a point where we've got the, the extension of such power 
that we have weapon systems that apparently if they are to be unleashed would mean the end of this whole line of which we are taking the measure of the whole universe right back to thirteen point seven billion years it's a really incredibly significant moment that we live in the evolution of consciousness along that you almost right in line now you bring this up every show and i bring up my yeah you always mention that point and many other shows i watch a show a lot and you you we always bring this point up now that we're in a very dramatic time well that's a question you could bring up is this just like we've been here two hundred thousand years ten thousand generations and is this just the time we're in now we're in the year of the christian era 2005 and is this just like the rest of history or is there something major going on like in punctuated equilibrium this quantitative change quantity and then qualitative well that's what are we at a moment of qualitative what are the signs the evolution of things and if we are that's a major story. They've got to yeah. be on the top of the we, front we page of the, New York Times. We've got the punchline. Yeah, okay. Remember, Finning is are we? You think we Finning are? Finning is We're at a time of qualitative transformation. Oh, well, oh, I'll tell it to you. Yes. Okay. Well, but then that's worth bringing up every once in a while. Yes, every week. Rather but, than the news. Right, but it's a way you uh, deal with the implications of what are the formal causality effects mm. of this punctum. Point, right? Punctum? Yeah, punctum that's, that's point? Latin, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punctum. <laughs> it's from uh, it's from Latin. Okay. Punctums is uh, like a key crisis point in history or, or transformation. Or punctuated equilibrium is what the way in which species appear. Yes, yeah, yeah. But yeah. look, you ran through what I call first nature, the mm. little uh, fauna and the amoeba and all that. That completed with well, the Well, it was human actually the sponge 800, mi right. 600 million years ago. It led to, what do we got, 50 trillion cells in us? No, it's 100 trillion. 100 trillion cells. In a human That's organism. all first nature. What, what do you mean you first nature? Be, de something that we're still trying to figure out who made it. What made us? Well, it's, uh, it's going to be found to be a priori mystery. If we go okay, up right. Yeah. That, and so, but what we did, I mean, human evolution stopped. This form was established, I don't know, 10, uh, 27,000 years ago, okay? Where, where do you get that? I don't understand. Well, that's when the, the aliens uh, from the Buddhist constellation altered the, uh, the ape. Um, what happened? You had the Neanderthal ape and you had another ape. The Neanderthal died out, but the uh, Boodian civilization came and altered the wrist and the jaw of this other ape what line, kind of thing and that, that became that, and that, that came in Cro-Magnon men. Well, I, it's I, from I, very esoteric secret uh, sources. Um, well, I, you send me chapter and verse on that because I, I mean I, I think it's the line goes back to. But, I, but, years. but that's a distraction. Sorry, and, I brought and that up. Home, uh, now Neanderthal was probably Homo erectus. I mean, a precursor yeah. hominoid along the line, but they didn't know, get altered. We so are we all got six altered. billion are descended of a single <laughs> ancestor out of Africa two hundred thousand years ago. <laughs> Yes, but the, I, I think the human really consciousness, human consciousness, where we developed because of the effect of this altering of our wrist and our jaw, it changed our chemistry, and we uh, humans developed a subconscious. And not to mention the mind. Right. Well, no, hmm. it changed. This, we created subconscious. Yeah. Apes don't have well, a subconscious. Where do you get a twenty-seven thousand? Twenty-seven thousand five hundred. That's uh, from my sources. And, uh, esoteric well, you sources. send me chapter and verse on that, okay. and I'll send you chapter and verse because I think the two hundred thousand year thing holds. And it's most it, people, linguistic overlays and things like that are re, are, are reifying. Right. So that is a correct but the, the, reading of what actually. Oh happened. yeah, there were there was uh, rough tools in that, but that was done. The point is, is that most. Uh, historians see culture beginning about 30,000 BC. Well, we culture is one thing. Most of the time, we're wandering around looking for carrion. I suppose. No, it's Just a surviving. culture that begins to grow second nature. Now, second nature is what we were talking about. What technology? What humans make? And it was that that evolved from that point, 30,000 BC on. The creation of language, and then all the extensions of language, which we now call media and technology. Oh, okay. The second, uh, oh. the second nature evolution oh. came to a, a critical point. With, in 1957 with the satellite. In when? 1957 when Sputnik went up. Because you know what that was? That was an extension of the whole planet yeah, rather than yeah. our eyes, ears, and noses. Yeah, uh, Not just the human form, but yeah. the whole matrix, the yeah. uh, canubium of Earth, terrestrial uh, canubium. Uh. So that's because in a satellite, once humans could live in it, they mm -hmm. were like living here. Mm -hmm. Now you could live out in an inhospitable outer space inside a little device, so you had created an artificial nature. Do you think we're going to go out into space if we. I got three, four grandchildren now. 
Yeah, yeah, we're going out to space. Three that, year olds that'll and be, are they going to move physically into space? I yeah, yeah, so. that's a given. So? I don't yeah. even think so. No, they're that's, but that ain't, they're already moving through deeper spaces yeah, with television and their the computer. First, no, no, look the at first. the deeper spaces well, we're moving Fuller through. Fuller was the first one who took a system view of things and called this spaceship Earth we're living on. Right. This and that was like a 19th century a 19th century metaphor. Yeah. He, he did not point out the new spaces, the, the proprioceptive spaces, the inner trip, McLuhan called it. The nose The kinesthetic. The extent when you're watching TV, yeah. you're moving beyond your body, yeah. and and other bodies are coming inside you. Uh -huh. You can't even visualize the TV body that yeah. is added to the first nature form uh -huh. we developed. Uh -huh. The second nature form causes incredible changes in landscapes that are not perceivable by the eye or to be spoken by the ear. Uh -huh. Why did drug taking take over in the 60s? LSD and the inner trip because it was miming what people were already doing through TV. Well, LSD wasn't even invented until 1948. Uh, 1943. Actually, you know, I was there the day that Hoffman took it, in April really? 1943. I was sent there by my employers to see what Somewhere we, in Switzerland or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, I was in his lab, yeah. and I didn't know that he was taking it that day. Or there was such a thing existing. No, we knew, because he, he discovered it in 38 and put it on the shelf really? for five years. And in 43, events of that day led him to uh, accidentally get on a taste of it, and then he went back a few days later and did it again. Oh. But the point was that the job of the Solar Government Intelligence Agency, uh -huh. the group I'm talking about, was yeah, to you look were, at... You were involved with them yeah. then? Yes, my uh, father was, your and father, so I yeah. went along with him. Yeah, and right. uh, I didn't know you what. A, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, I was only 19 then, uh -huh. uh, 21. Uh -huh. But the the point was is that we monitored the people I r worked with, monitored new technologies because uh -huh. they understood the meeting was the message. Uh -huh. And as I said earlier, the wealthy oligarchy funds from mm -hmm. the 17, 1800, 19th yeah. century if not back were, to the sitting, Roman era. were sitting on the sidelines during the 30s and 40s uh -huh. because money become pro public property. Uh -huh. With the Keynesian revolution, uh -huh. the private ownership of money collapsed with the World Depression 29 to 31. Uh -huh. Then after that, governments took over and made money a guaranteed environment for uh -huh. people. Uh -huh. And that's called the New Deal uh -huh. or fascism or socialism or communism. Uh -huh. the, 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 Industrial peasants now had to have money, regardless of where they were. They had some way to create demand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it became a, they realized it was a medium. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was a ground, and people didn't and know Mr. it was a medium. And Mr. Nixon in 1972 said, "We're all Keynesians now." Yes, and th but then he took. And the I would goal. like to know what we are now in the year 2005. Well, what no, are we no, all no, now? I'm going to give you a little secret uh, here. Since Deep Throat came out yeah. um, last week, um, the reason Nixon was Watergated. Mm -hmm. was because on August 15th, 1971, he created a floating exchange mm -hmm. and created a fluid economy, no longer based on the uh, Bretton Woods setup of 1944. Right. So, Cut off the gold so some of the, yeah, some mm -hmm. of the uh, oligarch money uh -huh. objected to that. I bet you a lot of those so gold they, bugs are very upset. Yeah. So they watergated Nixon. That, well, it was because of that, not for any other reason. Not because of the plumbers and no. things? And all there that was some, all I don't want to name a particular person, but a particular person was pretty angry about what happened to Elder Hiss, mm -hmm. because uh, this person was involved with secret negotiations with the Bolsheviks mm -hmm. in the 50s, and that was normal. That, that saved a lot of nuclear war or any mm -hmm. Cold War intensities. Mm -hmm. But so they had, and Nixon was the one who uh, caused problems with that under, when he was vice president. So you've been so somewhat involved with the intelligence agency to try to understand the realities behind things. Could you tell me why did we, then the OSS and that kind of thing, we had that involved in CIA and that yes, kind of that thing. Yes, that was we a project that. paperclip. Can you tell me how it is that the people, and they got lots and lots and lots and lots of support and money goes into the intelligence, how it is that the, our intelligence agencies missed, as it were? September 11th? The, no. No, I wasn't thinking that specifically. I was thinking the biggie that they missed. They're going along, working along, all tunnel visioned mm -hmm. and uh, they are piped and everything like that. But uh, they missed the implosion of the Soviet Union. Right. They no. missed it. Right. Biggest event that, as far as the geostrategic thinking and everything, they didn't, they missed it. It just right. happened sort of unknowing to them. They you know, didn't I was see it coming. Right. And how can they be so mo myopic? Well, let me get to too exclusive. That, and are they still as myopic? And where can we go to get a best reading of what's actually taking place in a comprehensive way if we can't go to things like, and what does the president or the executive people do for intelligence to try really understanding the implications of technology, what's really going on, if you can't go to the most well-funded intelligence agencies that we have, 
Are they all ideologically larger that they can't see things in a broad context? And where do we go to get that broad context of understanding about what's transpiring in terms of the evolution of consciousness right. let me on lay this that spaceship out for you. Earth in, in, let in me the lay larger that out for universe? You. Let, me, let me give you no, two. No, man, just off your, where? Where do we go? Well, I'm going to explain that. Okay. You know, let, me, let me just talk for a minute or so here. Where's the source person? for the best information to understand things? Me. I'm the best source. You are. Okay, now, well, it's good to know. At now, least now listen to this here. Right. First off, mm -hmm. I'm one of the few people in the world who predicted the, the Berlin Wall would go down. I did it on an L.A. radio station, October 1988. No one believed me. A year later, when the wall went down on November 89, uh -huh. the DJ, he said, holy shit, that's mm -hmm. Bob. And they replayed it on the mm -hmm. end of November, proof that I had said it. Well, and and how come I knew that? Because I knew that West Germany had made a deal with Gorbachev in 82 mm -hmm. through my own friends and Dr. Beter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we knew it was Who's coming. Dr. Beter? He was an intelligence specialist in Washington. All right. He's the one who exposed the... Are you, you're well acquainted with the intelligence yeah, sources yeah, in yeah. the world and everything? Matter of fact, where are some of the major sources where people are interested in understanding things? I'm telling you, you got to let me tell you. Where are you. the major sources of that? I'm telling you. Yeah, okay. I want to first of all tell you. We've got the Dr. Beter. For the, yeah, for the record, Never heard Mark Felt was not Deep Throat. Uh -huh. He was an extension well, Deep Throat. Well, he just said he was. You know who Deep Throat was? Al Haig. Okay? Uh, uh, now, that's why I'm going to put that on the record here. Uh, uh, Al Haig, and I was involved with Watergate, so I know who did what. Uh -huh. Al Haig was Deep Throat, uh -huh. okay, at the deepest level. Uh -huh. Mark Felt is a lower down guy. Now, the I other thing is I predicted, FBI. I predicted. He was the FBI. Yeah. He was, he was number two man in I'm FBI. in charge. Remember yeah. I said, I'm in charge. Now, <laughs> now you have to understand that when, the, yeah. when the information environment implodes around the White House, and the when word becomes. the become, information environment implodes around, around the, the White what House. Are, what are you talking about? The what word that, that makes the market. Yeah. As I was saying, well, this is all related to McLuhan, as okay. we're going to see. Okay. So when the word makes the market from actually 1947 on, when they formed the National Security uh, Act, which said, we have the right to lie to people. We have a right to tell Americans uh, that they shouldn't know certain things because the facts were there was no United States anymore. And that's why the intelligence agencies, um, ha from that point on, 1947, lied to people. Now, the people expect real information. By the time you get to the 60s, 70s, there's no real information anymore. You can't have real you information. You think you had real information coming from our government before that? Uh, yes, okay. you, you, you would get in trouble for it was illegal to lie. Mm -hmm. It's not legal from 1947 on. They now call it spin. It's yeah. interpretation. Yeah. Well, that's Gray the Android meme. That's view. Android meme spinning and talking to other machines. Yeah. But um, what happened by uh, 1971 when the economy is not built, built on gold anymore? Uh -huh. It's built on information, and Nixon knew that as president because he lived it every day. Uh -huh. He said he tried. He was a radical. He says, let's get rid of the reference to gold. Mm -hmm. And then that led to a lot of problems. They let problems. it flow, yeah. What he didn't understand, and neither did the CIA, why did the CIA or any of these agencies not know? Because they were dealing with an environment from the 60s on where information was relatively useless. Well, you've got this thing about information, but if I think of geostrategic thinking of the time you're talking about and so forth, I think of George Kennan. I think of containment, I think of the heartland yeah. and the Soviet, and yeah. that traditional way that informed, got us in trouble in uh, Vietnam, that sort of thing. That was for and the myth of the United States. Well, it, the, myth, the British sea power, the extension yeah. of myth power. myth of nations. The, that geostrategic thinking, that's what I think. Nations died in the, 1918. Wait a minute, nations died in 1918. 18. What was that all about in Germany and France and all those countries that still had a sense of nation? And we now have 200 That nations. was advertising. That when was, you brought in radio, when uh -huh. you brought in radio in the 20s, uh -huh. What does what happens? Tribal memories come up. Japan, Italy, and Germany. It was a hot medium. Yeah, those three countries, not as industrialized as Britain and the United States, mm -hmm. they saw that they could create new, put on a sense of their own tribal history mm -hmm. because of the echo chamber that radio caused. The formal causality of radio was to retrieve the, the more tribalized now cultures. You see, you're getting into language you throw out very adroitly and That's so forth, right. but it probably doesn't make sense when you say that retrieve. I'm not this here to that. make sense. I I'm here to yeah. stimulate. Okay. It's what McLuhan would say bashing cliches to create new patterns. Wouldn't he something else? Yeah, just bashing cliches. We're yeah. just probing. Yeah, we're, we're probing. probing. I want to make something, yeah. uh, if you're listening, and yeah. you listen.
this can be listened to again. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you tape it. It's on the record. Yeah, it's on it's the record. It's on the record. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I always do my shows with uh, you to uh, put stuff on the record. Right. Uh, I, I announced it. Oh, we got Al Haig as Deep Throat. Yeah. Really. Now okay. let's see well, if I'm right in 30 well, years. Well, we'll see. In 30, 30 years. Oh, we've got to wait 30 oh, years. Oh, yeah, we got to wait a long time yeah, before, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff comes Bob up. Bob Woodward said Deep Throat was Mr. Woodward. In 1999, I was at a conference. I went for once in my life, I went to a UFO wacky conference to tell them about alien contact. And I laid out what happened 27,500 BC, and I also explained how the contact will happen, mm -hmm. the official contact with the Boodians by 2025. Boodians? Yeah. Boodians. The Boodians are from on, the Boodians. Come on, no, wait a minute. Who are the Boodians? The like Boodians booty, like shake your booty? You ever heard the store Ar star I've heard Arcturus? Of you ever heard of Arcturus? I've never heard of Arcturus. Okay, it's a famous star. It's in the the constellation called Booties. Booties. B O O T E S. Like shake your booty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. B O O T E S. I mean, oh, you shake mean, your booty is Zappa. He had yeah. a picture yeah, of the yeah, Booties Frank constellation. Zappa was so great. On one Plastic of his albums. People. No, yeah. wait. Listen. He had, yeah. he had he had one of his, he had the, he had the Booties constellation on one size fits all on the cover art. In the really? Back. I, I missed that. And, yeah. and he had on that album, mm. uh, did a vehicle land mm. in blah blah blah. It was about UFOs. He kind of put that little in bit. I don't know how he knew that. Uh. But the um, booties is a constellation, and they are the ones that are officially going to make the contact with us. Okay, with us. The booties, How are they going to do it? The booties? Yeah. The booties? The booties. Now, spell it out a little bit, because that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm now. telling you a big thing here. Yeah, all right. And uh, I said this in 1999. Everybody was excited about what I had to say. And they said, well, will you come back to the conference next year? I said, no, I've done my statement. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make any more money on it or anything. It's on tape. We'll see in 30 years, am I right? Keep your and eye out for the Boodians. Yeah, is yeah. that the word? And you know, gonna gonna do? Do? you know what, what they're going to do? What are the Boodians going to do? They're going to leave a device on the space station uh -huh. that'll be up there. Yeah. And some astronaut will see it. Yeah. And it'll say, the device will have some kind of written ex yeah. language that the, the person can understand. They'll say, press here and talk. Uh huh. And that's when it'll happen. They'll press there, and it'll be like that guy in Slaughterhouse Five, the movie where he goes up uh -huh. in a little. In a little bulb. That was uh, 30 years ago, that movie. Yeah. Anyway, the Kurt Vonnegut novel. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, you press a button, and then something will manifest to him. So you think. And that'll be the official contact. And you're, you're sensing in that, you're sensing a sort of. Uh, uh, l l Carl Sagan and Seti, and that they've been looking for forms of yeah. intelligent existence out there. Probability theory is that there must be in the vast expanse yep. of this and parallel universes intelligent life somewhere as a crit and so forth. But we have not yet, in, in any official kind of sense, had any record of that. That's right. But you know, uh, we, we haven't. That's still now. You're saying that the booties, <laughs> the Boodians, yeah. are a representation that shows that there is an intelligent form of life out beyond our normally perceived notion of the evolution. And they are now, already that's a major event, and yeah. why is it not more, um, you know, uh, part of the general knowledge, if this is the case? It, because we have, we're in an information vortex of a hurricane of information. A every absurd viewpoint has a magazine, has a show, and everything. People celebrate all kinds of points of view. It's very hard to stay on the, the truth or yeah. on a fact. We used to have facts are irrelevant. That's what I mean by post-information. Well, facts so the are not irrelevant. They, they are irrelevant. Are, they no. are. I was explaining this to Larry so Gell. Yeah, Larry, Larry Gell. Not Gell. 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 I was explaining Gell. to him yeah. the, the ridiculousness of his show. Uh -huh. He now just is just told me that he's going to have access to the whole world. His shows can be seen. Yeah. And he says the FBI and the uh, police and the PR companies, they all watch his show uh -huh. uh, because they want to see what the bureaucrats and the ambassadors are saying. Yeah, and I say, I say, Larry, that's totally irrelevant. Uh -huh. These ambassadors cannot solve any problems. Uh -huh. He says, you're right, Bob. Uh -huh. I said, the point is they have to be tender, serious, and they offer problems or solutions, and they discuss them in the United Nations Who and whatever. Who can offer solutions, or are there no solutions to be offered, or what is the context in which we try to understand the evolution Technology of is a solution. Uh -huh. Technology genetic, is genetic engineering over time, a lot of, lot of roadkill on the way, uh -huh. but we will improve over the next hundred years. Uh -huh. Cold fusion will be a tremendous have we, breakthrough. Have we improved uh, over the course of uh, evolution of consciousness? Have we improved? Yes. We have expanded our environments when, to the point where the satellite extended the whole planet, uh -huh. and then that gets smaller and smaller. Yeah. Then you have the digital era comes over, and the digital era is technology coming alive and being niche marketed to you or to particular groups, and it becomes user friendly. Uh -huh. Technology becomes so friendly uh -huh. that kids spend all their time engaging in the voluntary now the, ESP. The, right, and the technology is an extension of consciousness. 
Uh, you, you think of you think of the north. Yeah, it spirit. is consciousness. You think of it God is Karadesha. consciousness. It is consciousness itself yes. has a re speech. Uh -huh. We would not be conscious unless we had speech. Speech is the first technology. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Then gesture before so, that. So and so that in the course of the evolution of events. Now we're again in the Christian era, 2005. We're talking now in June, in the middle of a hot spell that I would like to complain about because mm -hmm. it ain't right. And nature did no not. No problem. Mean we're in a cold be, room here. Yeah, August. To, well, we happen to be cool <laughs> because thanks to technology. For two hours. The yeah. technology is uh, is, is yeah. we we got that thing. We've created that kind. I mean, and the technology, and I come back to that again, trying to say, is this, is this just like part of history? We could be in the 13th century or the 14th century, or the 15th century, or the 16th century, and life just goes on and it takes 200 years to invent a nail or a tack. And now in every field, in every place of understanding and everything, we're zeroing in on with the sub, we're ze they got a telescope that's going to be up in 2007 already uh, in the works, it orbits the sun and the earth, and they're going to get down within one second of the birth of Big Bang photograph from the beginning of the universe. Of uh, first nature. We're coming, that's, we're, that's what I'm saying is we live in a time, what, one of the things that should be there, we live in a time of qualitative transformation in the evolution of events like speciation, or it's not just your normal quantitative <laughs> connection to history, it's a time of qualitative change. Do you agree with that? Yes. You look back through history. But I think we can be more precise about it. Okay. It be, we say what no, it actually is. but that's pretty is. big in and of itself, and then you oh, say, yeah. why? What makes this different it's than so any big. other time? It's in, so big. They say in the Jewish Seder, what makes this any time different than any time? What makes this age different? Than all of human history going back 200 years. You know what makes it different? I don't know about booty and this flesh body. Yeah, I call it the chemical body. Yeah, has been marginalized and obsolesced. Oh. We don't even live in it. So the the normal human form that people think they have doesn't yeah. exist anymore. What does That's that mean? a pretty. I mean, you're sitting there. I'm talking to you now. Right. right? I mean, we got six billion people. Yes, but we're being taped and we're oh. being broadcast. That's the right. Real that exists, the real The yeah. real thing about humans is they communicate, uh -huh. and their technology is communication, mm -hmm. and therefore speech and older forms of communication are uh -huh. obsolete. That is what's disappeared. Speech and older forms, forms of, of communication. Do not modulate minute, reality. Speech, uh, speech writing, and writing. Movies. Uh, movies are obsolete. Yeah, yeah. Television's obsolete. Computer programs are obsolete. What isn't obsolete in terms of the communication of this whole thing? We got James The Travlock. fact that technology came alive. Yeah. That's what's not the technology, obsolete. Technology, well, we had Talhard de Chardin talking about the Omega Point. And about but the he related sphere. it back to first nature. He, he was sort of talking about the effect on first okay, nature. Okay, where do we go to get a sense of understanding what it is that's actually taking place in your view? I repair to somebody like Buckminster Fuller. Right. You repair and, uh, to Mr. And I like Mr. McLuhan and so forth. But that uh, this that is a crux point. Now we've come up to I, this those point. Are a who, uh, some I'm telling you. Let me tell you. Answer your question. I heard your question. All right. I, I want, now what do you got? You got a piece have of paper there. Yeah, we, what have you got written on this piece of paper, Mr. Bob Dobbs, about the booty? And I was McLuhan's archivist. Yeah, I so know you were. I was up at the actual archives in Ottawa last summer, uh -huh. where I was organ. I uh, was wanted to see what I organized. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen where it was sent. I organized it for the family. Mm -hmm. But I decided, having just spoken to you just before I went to Ottawa and yeah. did a show last year, yeah. and we always get into this discussion over who has the most relevant perception, Bucky or McLuhan. So I went and looked at McLuhan's correspondence with Bucky, and I came across this. They got this. that magnificent photograph of them in the Bahamas in right. 1970, that magic with year. With the hat. That's right. The magic year, October 12th. Now, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah, October twelfth is the date. Nineteen seventy. All of human history is going to be measured. I came up with someone. Yeah. Someone was born October twelfth. I just read it the other day. Another person fits in there. I mean, Gerd Stern was born. Gerd Stern. Yeah, it was born God on that him. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that McLuhan is a, a, is a, a good friend of Bucky Fuller's. Yeah. Now, in nineteen seventy-five, about I was talking to Marshall seventy-four. I said, uh, our what do you say about Bucky Fuller? I just yeah. brought it up. And he said, well, Bucky's a 19th century artist, mm -hmm. whereas I and John Cage are 20th century artists. Mm -hmm. And I just let that lie. He's saying that Bucky is rearview mirror, not as in tune with what's happening as himself. And it's interesting, he names a musician as equal to him, because McLuhan John was a Cage. musician, too. Oh. So I McLuhan never was got. a musician? Yes, he I considered media. Where he said we lived entirely by music. Uh -huh. That was acoustic space, Interesting, tactile yeah. space, uh -huh. and he considered himself a painter, a musician, a scientist, a physicist, a doctor, all the all the specialties. Well They'd all imploded into uh -huh. the word makes the market, and because he understood that, mm -hmm. he could he could surf it. <coughs> yeah. So here's what I 
I finally found last summer, that's 30 years later, 74 mm. to 2004, mm. him spelling out in detail what Bucky was limited on. Uh -huh. And this is really important. Right. So it begins with synergetics. Now that's probably the time that book came out. I mm. think the book was coming out in the middle 70s. Mm. And I'm assuming this was written in the middle 70s. He says synergetics is a form of hendiades. I don't know what that yeah. means. Hendiades, hendiades means hendiades? one by means of two. And if you look it up in the dictionary, uh -huh. uh, you'll see a poet says the, the, the jar was rusty and red. Rusty is red. It's like redundant to Ed and red. They're different shades of rust. Yes, but it's, a, it's a poetic to device yeah. to, to create yeah. a more vivid image, yeah. but you're kind of repeating the same idea in the second adjective. Redundant. Adjective. Yeah. Okay. What so is the one word? Hendiades, H-E-N-D-I-A-D-Y-S. Is that Greek? Probably. Yeah. Um, the point it's is Greek it means me. one by mm. means of two. Right. One by means of two. Uh -huh. So he's saying synergetics is a form of hendiades. He says, I'm making the new. He's talking about the book. Not the concept. Tell about the concept. The concept. Well, sy synergy is usually is a behavior system unpredicted by the sum of its parts. Right, and he goes yeah. into that. So synergetics is at the title, and he says a form of hendiades, which is a, a chapter title in one of his books done in 1970, a book called Cliched Archetype. You can in look 1970. Up. Yeah, 1970. Mm -hmm. and Bobby Dylan was in 1970. Yeah. Okay, I'm making the new in all processes or situations, as opposed to matching. Uh -huh. Most people, literate people, try to match. They try to take what their image and information is in their mind and see if it fits reality outside. Yeah. It's linear, a match. Linear. But pre-literate people uh -huh. and post-literate people yeah. are hallucinating and L making. Pre-literate like and we post literate are. Yeah, we're, we're, all right, I understand we're, we're that. Making. We're closing quotes on yeah. what, I'm, and we're getting tactically involved with That's the That's right. Very we're like back in nature except it's cosmic. That's right. We're, we're both creating the, re the reality. No. It's not just I'm saying this is it, and you see if you if it spells right. No, you know? I understand. Yeah, right. I think that's so true. Hendiades, We're being rejoined to nature cosmically. So Hendiades no. is making the new in all processes or situations. Then he quotes Bucky, getting five out of four. There's your synergy, getting mm. five out of four. Oh. Now McLuhan developed the tetrad, a four-part structure, but he also was very interested in five, and he's saying Bucky, Bucky is getting five out of four. You get more than you put in. This will lead to confusion, as it will lead to, uh, in later. The way quantitative man looks at change. He's saying Bucky is a quantitative man, looks at change, sees that you get more than you put in, more out than you put in. Bucky has transformed the world in Pythagorean terms. His, typo his topology of universe, or topology as universe. Then McLuhan says topology is a tetrahedron, a big Bucky Fuller word. Yeah. Then he says, or pattern recognition, a big McLuhan word. Mm. So tetrahedron. Yeah, so or topology or is tetrahedron Sarat. or pattern recognition in geometric Euclidean space, which mm. is alphabetic visual space. Linear. Yes. Mm. Then he says, so he's saying Bucky is a linear man uh -huh. looking at the making phenomenon still from a matching 19th century Euclidean perspective. Mm -hmm. He says Bucky has reduced all relationships to tetrahedron relationships. Out of this we get new quantities unexpectedly. New quantities, not qualities, new quantities. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, you know, we had enough to feed the world. He said, do we also get new resources? McLuhan says, yes, this is synergetics. Synergetics provides for new resources out of existing knowledge. It recycles, for example, translates every physical happening into topology, into tetrahedrons. Hmm. Now, the tetrahedron's properties and advantages, McLuhan says, as Aristotle talked about the world in terms of spheres, so Bucky talks in terms of tetrahedrons, hmm. because everything fits. Then McLuhan says, bu Bucky balls, it's all Bucky, Bucky balls. balls, spheres. Yeah. And he's saying this comes back from Aristotle. But McLuhan then says what his difference is, what his point that he thinks Bucky doesn't get. Mm -hmm. Here's what he has. He has HMM, his initial. Mm -hmm. He has his initials there. Mm -hmm. And he says metaphor is a four-sided figure, and metonymy, which is another kind of metaphor, is a three-sided figure. A tetrahedron is a three-sided figure in a four-sided solid. Right. Right. Then McLuhan says the universe is an utterance or word. Remember I'm talking about the word makes the market? Yeah. The universe, this is maybe his Catholic theology, but not just that, he because Catholic, he updated, yeah. he updated yeah. the Catholic theology. Yeah. The universe is an utterance or word. Then he says what Bucky doesn't know is that he has transformed world, then in brackets, topology of tetrahedral relationships. Bucky has discovered verbal universe, a making universe, and doesn't recognize it. So that in the end, Triangles and tetrahedra covers the ground, 
Bucky covers it, but he doesn't understand what he's saying. Mm. And what he really means is that Bucky still was a machine maker, an efficient causality guy, and a final causality guy, and a material causality guy. He worked revolutions all those points, but he missed the formal causality where we make a universe through information itself, through talking, and the way the talk show reality is taken over mm. in all kinds of media. That is a making of reality, not a matching. And that's why when, when Larry Gell says, People look at his show to tell, to see what the truth is. And I said to Larry, that's not the truth. The truth is irrelevant. He says, well, the there PR... There is no truth. No, no. The PR firms say that we do lies, and Larry, you do truth. And I, I said, yes, and the lies are more valuable now because ever since we have TV, if we didn't have the distraction of the information environment that TV brought in the 50s, 60s, we would have had a nuclear war. Mm -hmm. The software dialogue, the software distraction saved us from the old military panics, military tribal paranoia that would lead to national war, you know, battles. That was superseded you by the... think this we're home free now? We're home free. The machines are home free. The machines are home free. We are not home free. And we still have control over the machines. Uh, yeah. The way we... Well says for about another 12 years, you know. Well, is he talking about 2012? Uh, uh, no, not 20, it would be on there, about 2020, I think. You know. Well, that, I, would, I would agree. That where the machines are going to supersede our intelligence. Yeah, I have my chart. So and I then it's going to go exponential. That's right. But the singularity, that will yeah. be... 2020, uh, I have He's taking a lot of selenium, he's agreeing so with he'll my live chart. long enough to see He's that He's agreeing moment. with my chart that uh -huh. I laid out in 1995. Uh -huh. I have 2020 as a singularity. Uh -huh. And it, we will have cold fusion by 2012, you okay? You talking about cold yeah. fusion. Because that's going to save us. cold fusion. I mean, cold fusion, they've been talking about hydrogen power Confusion as a way of gaining uh, unlimited energy. We have energy. We got we got James Lovelock of uh, Gaia fame, who really makes a lot of sense with that Gaia notion and so forth. He now saying he now favors not just you don't have to go cold fusion. And I did a thing the other day with it. We could just use atomic energy in order to get power, in order to have it work within a fission-based system. And I talked to a guy the other day. <coughs> said there's never been a single loss of life through the use of atomic energy for power systems in the history of this planet that was not related to war. That's that is, right. Is, if As recycled. LaRouche used to say, more people died at Chappaquiddick than in a nuclear plant. Nobody has ever died from a uh, nuclear generating plant. That creates what about Chernobyl? pollution. That was not that had military applications. Okay. They were transforming right. plutonium or right. isotopes. And that but there was purely that. It isn't so we could begin we could be superseding uh, the uh, the the lack of uh, uh, unlimited energy that you don't need cold fusion in order to arrive at that. In fact, we are transcending scarcity as an ontologic reality as part of a larger context, which is part of what Mr. Fuller put presented to us in his world game and other things. Okay. And I would propose Mr. Fuller world game and that system they have. They're still doing it as the best source of intelligence for trying to understand the reality of what's happening. Uh, that is available to us, and the other systems are so into, are so ideologically laden that they are very dangerous. I think it's very dangerous. Okay. I think the odds are we're going to blow up the whole system. No, we're not because here's you don't the, think so. Now here's the no, reason. you don't. No, you no, can't we're say not. we're not. We might. Oh, we could always, but we're not. Easy. Uh, Why? Because the survivors will have cold fusion. What now, survivors? Now there will be no survivors China. if there is an. There'll be a lot of survivors in China. There will be no survivors of an uh, all-out atomic. Uh, well, it won't uh, get that big. It won't it get that will, big. It's that no. It'll it be exists. limited nuclear war. No. Okay. Limited. Something's going to prevent what is now there. Right. That has been capable. We've been capable of that in terms of what's there since 1970. And we have, in the firm of Buckminster Fuller's reading of things, we've transcended an ontologic reality where scarcity applies in terms of a system's understanding of the whole planet. Right, but he didn't 1970. see the he was Neither one has been he, realized. He talked about frictionless-based energies coming. He saw that there was no friction in, in nature and that therefore... No, he took energy as just one factor of understanding the overall operation right. of the economy but within an evolution of universal consciousness. But he was looking at first nature as his model. Second well, you're nature... you're using terms like first nature. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. took these things all into he account. He was looking at technology and projecting 
first nature imagery on it, not knowing that the effects of technology, which he only dealt with efficient causality, he missed the formal causality. Now you're using your language there as like right. a sacerdotal look kind you of can thing look it to up. look it up in order to make a thing. Makes sense. Then re no, to but take. you think that we are, you are, you are, you are, you are, I'm you not getting to any sentences here. Are you sanguine that we are not going to destroy this line of evolution in a spasm of hatred and some Armageddon thing where we unleash the destructive capability that's now built to such Promethean capability? I'm sanguine that there will be humans that will survive it. There will, oh, there will be some yeah, humans. Yeah, there And they will the have all this glorious technology they to work with. They would survive. They, if yeah. there had been an unleashing in 1963 or 62 or when in Cuba and that sort of thing, there would They're, have been some survivors in a Guinea cave somewhere. Yeah, but they probably, they wouldn't have gotten to cold fusion. That would uh, have been a tragedy. You, the point so is you think got the to cold come. fusion is going to Pond's cold fusion or that can come from yep. China and that's going to be unlimited energy and that's going to have its transcend scarcity yeah. you know and then there we're going to be able to bring in these other systems and that's what you think and the key to that is getting an unlimited energy system that can allow the system. Yeah. Is and that what you see is that? Is yes, but let me, let me say a little more. Mm -hmm. the, uh, because it may be we're already there. The effects proceed, we're already there. The yeah. effects proceed causes in this yeah. sense. <laughs> the that's effects what proceed like, causes. Like, like yeah. uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, and, and uh -huh. how do the effects proceed causes? Causes. We White have, rabbit. We have frictionless e energy experience already with 24-7 mm. internet. Mm -hmm. This can't be controlled information. People can experience it, and it's relatively inexpensive, mm -hmm. and it just never stops. Uh -huh. So the software, yeah. which came out of technology, second nature's inventions, mm -hmm. um, is prefiguring the merger of first nature and second nature. And first nature is the perpetual energy of the sun and the universe. Mm -hmm. Second nature, humans have made technology that always had friction and wind down and mm -hmm. stopped mm -hmm. but with cold entropy entropy but well, with that's cold fusion law of thermodynamics yeah. Yeah. with cold fusion yeah. you take the the it's the first time humans have made a technology that has the characteristics of first nature so i call it a fusion of first nature and second nature well there have been it's frictionless base yeah. Yeah. frictionless base and then that will all be able to solve the shelter problems mm. we never solved the shelter yeah first body problems. Mm -hmm. um, we've solved communication problems. Right. But how to relate that friction-based communication society based mm -hmm. on money mm -hmm. and the old style of economics yeah. to an actual reality which is not based on friction mm -hmm. in communication media mm -hmm. and then eventually with technology, cold fusion, that will allow us to live in a building and have heat yeah. And and all the basic needs to and be able the body. to and be able to transcend the uh, envies and the so forth of a situation of scarcity. People will be able to be in a non-scarce security yeah. kind of way where we can all cooperate like an orchestra of the spheres. Now I don't and realize some sort of a synergistic resonance. You'll then have fending its wake in this sense. Yeah, the it will people, resonate to people will then have energy to do with their time, and they won't know what to do, or they're going to invent a lot of things. So I wouldn't be surprised that once we establish this collectively. Uh, negatropic situation, mm -hmm. then human perversity and humans need to have different variety will come out. So people will set up game zones where they will kill each other mm -hmm. as a game. They'll do all kinds of bizarre expressionist things, just like we have in culture and in information culture, mm -hmm. all forms of bizarre. Uh -huh. you, the human condition of being born here and uh -huh. looking for variety and, and spice of excitement and, and experiencing new energies and environments, that never changes. But we've created a second nature that has caught up to that perverse yeah, need. Right. Then we get cold fusion, which will happen in China. You know why? This mm. is an intelligence agency prediction by yeah. me, uh -huh. is that Bush will move into Iran. Mm. He'll bog down the Middle East even worse. Oh, Saudi Arabia won't be able to get their oil out. Mm -hmm. the, on, the one country that's developing all through the, this decade, the naughty knots, yeah. is China. Uh -huh. They will need oil. Uh -huh. They will really need it. They're yeah. a different mindset. Yeah. And they will immediately go to alternative they're sources. They're going to eat our lunch. Yeah, they're going to they're go to alternative sources, and they're going to Come see. Come not be afraid of Fleischmann will win. Yeah. It'll be implemented, and that'll be the breakthrough of, uh, for humanity uh -huh. of a frictionless-based energy system. Uh -huh. And it'll be thank, thankful to Bush for getting the bogged up in you heard it here least. first, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. The intelligence source of Robert Dobbs, Bob Dobbs. Bob, I'm sorry we could go on talking, running down. I mean, it's really good talking, always good talking with you. 
your pleasure to talk to him. We'll put up his email at the end. He can yeah, communicate yeah, yeah, with you in email. email, and then you can do a Google search, and they'll come up with a million different things that he's been involved in. He's really on top of things in a very interesting kind of way. Always a pleasure to talk to Robert or Bob Dobbs. And Bob, thanks a lot for coming. I really appreciate your coming in. It was really good talking with you, as always. I'll see you next round. Next round, <laughs> right? And we'll keep your ear tuned. And uh, we invite you to. We'll come back again tomorrow. That's it for this particular program. Once again, Bob, thanks a lot for everything. Really great talking with you, as always. Always. Good to talk to somebody who knows so something. So I'm really interested in this um, this thing. So the this the the this so you're, the, the are you optimistic? The, are you optimistic the, the Bush about thing the will process. flip into a great breakthrough? Uh -huh. It's a terrible situation now. Yeah, it's, right? it's, it's it's theater of the absurd. Yeah, yeah. it's theater of the it's our toe or it's Beckett or something yeah. like democracy and everything. And, and they don't have you know what that is? That's the end like of communication. Uh -huh. That it's it's absurd because the communication principles based on don't apply anymore. See, that's in a way. Humanity's disappeared and having a war over nothing. Now, wait a minute, you tell you that. Humanity's disappeared. They're not. There's you walking around. Yeah, no, no, communication has disappeared. Uh, communi and, and that's why it's absurd. Bush is a president who doesn't speak, doesn't finish his sentences, and doesn't even listen to other media. I know, it's a he joke. That's the charisma a, yeah, of his image. He yeah. represents the president, which yeah. is ignoring the information society. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But that leads to a lot of military problems, Yeah. a lot of uh, terrorism. Yeah, well, I think that could lead also to a kind of spasm of things. I mean, it might. I think there's some changes going to have to happen politically and so forth. Or else, uh, I, I, I'm very, I'm not so sanguine that they're not going to just, uh, you know, run that string out, and they're not going to. They've transcended scarcity ontologically now, and they simply don't into systems that can do that.